much for the first two years didn't interfere. That way, you could adapt and think, well, it's not so bad. Although inwardly the thought remained, this is Holland. It belongs to us. Initially, they didn't interfere greatly with the Jews. But by degrees, prohibitions were introduced. Jews were not permitted on the trams. Jews must wear a yellow star. Jews must relinquish their bicycles. Jews must go to Jewish schools and many more restrictions. As we walked across our square a few days ago, Father talked about going into hiding. We don't want to be seized, he said, so we'll steal away and not wait until they come for us. On Sunday evening, the doorbell rang, and who should be there but Mr. Van Pels? He entered, and looking grim, he said, Marco's been conscripted into labor. She has to report tomorrow. The decision had been made to go into hiding, and I was instructed then to go the next morning and collect Maho on my bike and lead her as the first one into hiding. We arrived here. I opened the entry door and took in the bicycles. We went upstairs. When she could not go on, I prodded her forward because I felt her dismay. Where am I? What's happening? I thought, she's going to faint. Get her inside. I opened the door quickly and I jostled her inside. It all seemed a bit callous, really, like I was saying, now you're on your own. I ran back downstairs and opened the main door so that the staff could get in. At 7.30 in the morning, we closed our front door behind us. People early on their way to work looked at us with pity. The gaudy yellow star spoke for itself. We only wanted to get away and to arrive safely, nothing else. When we were in the street, father and mother told me about the plan. The hiding place would be in the building where father had his office. When we arrived at the Prinzegracht, Marco was already waiting for us. Mr. Frank glanced round the corridor, saw me and nodded to me. It was a signal that Anne, her mother and he had arrived safely. Therefore, I shouldn't worry. This was the bedroom of the Frank family. There was a bed here and one there. There was a table in front of the window and in the corner a stove. Mother and Marco were too tired and wretched to move a muscle. Our rooms were so full of rubbish that it was beyond description. Father and I, the two cleaners in the family, worked the whole day until we sank into clean beds at night. If you go up the stairs and open the door, you'll be amazed to find such a big, bright room in an old canal house. This serves as the kitchen, common room and the Van Pels bedroom. The Van Pels family arrived on July 13th. To our great amusement, Mrs. Van Pels had a large chamber pot in her hat box. I just don't feel at home without my potty, she declared. Mr. Van Pels had no potty, but rather a folding tea table under his arm. From the day they arrived, we all had meals amiably together, and after three days, it was just like we were one big family. 
en ontmoet. Want het volk van Nederland houdt ze goed. De kleine Holland weert zich dapper als een reus. Het is oranje, blijft oranje, is de leus. Voor u, voor mij en voor de waar. Mr. Frank had brought a box full of pictures, which Anne had clipped from magazines at home. Here's one of them. This, for example, is Heinz Ruhmann. He was one of the stars of our day. Greta Garbo. Greta Garbo. I don't recall that one. Lily Baumeister. She was also a screen actress. And cut this one out as well. Oh, how she loved these pictures. She had other pictures of people who interested her. Norma Shearer. She really loved her. Diana Durbin. And the royal family. She clipped whatever pictures she didn't have from here. The weekly review, Cinema and Theater. That's how she used to increase her collection. Those people all believed, logically enough, that they'd only be here temporarily. I always got the impression from each of them they thought it would be over soon. I think they counted on that. So they never indulge in amenities of any sort. In the other rooms, they didn't so much as hang a picture. It's amazing how far people will go to help others at the risk of their own lives. Our helpers are a fine example of this. Mr. Kleiman, Mr. Kugler, Beppa Meep have really pulled us through. Until August 21st, 1942, this was the entrance to the annex, an ordinary door. The step was still there. On that day, the staff downstairs, Mr. Kugler and Ellie's father, arrived at the shrewd idea of barricading it. And what could be better for that purpose than a bookcase set in front of? In this way, the entrance would be camouflaged. These windows were pasted with paper with a floral pattern, making it impossible to see outside. In the front, the windows were painted blue. This also obstructed any view. I can't tell you how oppressive it is never to go outside. Naturally, we're not allowed to look out the windows. I'm afraid that we will be discovered and shot. This is a shopping list for the butcher. We each had our specific tasks. Ellie was responsible for the baker and the milkman. My task was to bring in vegetables and meat. I found this in one of my coat pockets after the war. I was incredibly pleased to find it. This was my desk. Bep sat opposite me at a sofa.